Hi folks, Darren Rayfonso here talking about uh, injured workers and workers' comp and labor and industries in the state of Washington and across the United States of America. Uh, today we're going to talk basically about my claim. I usually try to fight for everybody else, but right now I'm trying to get my own claim done and I'm going to document through the process how that fighting for our rights as injured workers is, is, is a really a, a daunting affair. So here I have uh, the board of a, uh, Washington Board of Industrial Affairs has told LA, the workers' comp uh, adjusters, to reopen my claim, but the work comp adjusters don't want to reopen my claim and are, are refusing to, basically, at this point. So I'm going to call the Board of Industrial Appeals. I called them, and they told me to call this guy named Lionel, Lionel Greaves, uh, a division chief at l &I. So I'm going to give him a call and, and complain and see if he'll help. One two zero six five one six seven six five nine seven six five nine, and we'll put this on speaker. Uh, yes, I'm calling to talk about, uh, my name is Darren Fonso and I would like to file a complaint about my claims manager not complying with an order ordered by the Board of Industrial Appeals. Okay, um, one moment here, sir. So, I believe, let me try to get back in here. I think you sent me an email or two on the same issue, is that right? Correct. I have sent a couple emails because I'm, I'm doing this whole thing live on the Internet. My whole case for the whole six years I have done live on the Internet so that people can watch it as I go through the process. What do you, I'm sorry, I'm not following. What do you mean by live on the Internet? I, I do everything live on the Internet. My whole claim has been live on the Internet. You see, six years ago when I found the state was not obeying, obeying the laws and were harming me, I said I was going to make sure the world watched as they do it. So I do everything online. So I'm just, I'm not following what you mean by you do everything. You mean you let go on to the department's website to... No, I, I broadcast the whole thing, I, everything I do online, all everything I do online, the whole whole war that has been waged upon me, sir, has been I put online for everybody else to watch and see as it happens. So you mean like you're recording things? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes. So... Because I've had a couple people try to call the law on me for stuff I did not say involved with this, state agents. And so to protect myself from state agents, I record all calls, sir. Especially when it has to do with workers' comp. Okay, well, a few things. Um, just right up front. So you reached me. I'm the division chief of the Labor and Industries Division at the Attorney General's Office. So we are a separate agency from LNI. We are essentially their attorneys for litigation matters. Um, so I'm happy to talk to you about information to share, but I want to stress that I'm not your attorney. I cannot and should not provide you legal advice. My representations and duties are to LNI because they are our client in these situations. I just want to make sure that that's clear to you. So, so the board having me call you for, for advice is kind of not really very good then, is it? Because you, you don't represent me, the consumer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a patient, a consumer, of, a consumer of goods in the state of Washington, but yet you as the AG don't represent me. You say you represent l and I. I'm, I'm perplexed, sir. Okay, well, let me, let me address that. So... Well, first of all, I should say, in light of that, understand that I, I'm not trying to provide you legal advice. Okay. I will say that Washington is a two-party consent state as far as recordings go. So I just encourage you to look at what the laws are about that and to educate yourself on 
that point. Oh, I have. I, I know what's permissible in a court of law and what's not permissible in a court of law. And see, I'm only caring about what's permissible in the court of public opinion. I'm teaching public opinion. I don't care what's done in the law because apparently what's done in the law, nobody abides by it. Like the order that was just done by the board told you, Valdez, my claims worker, to open my claim, and she's refusing to. You see, when you state agents don't follow the law, why should I follow the law as a citizen? Well, I, my answer would be that everyone should follow the law. Even, even Natividad Valdez, the caseworker, right? She should reopen the claim if she's told to reopen the claim? Well, you have me at a disadvantage right now, sir, because I don't know all the facts of your situation. Oh, I'm sorry. So, what's going on? so yeah, I understand. And just... You know, I'm not, I'm not consenting to being recorded or anything else. I just want to talk to you because I do think it's important that you have a, an avenue you can call and you can talk through whatever issues may be happening. But I also don't want you to be under misimpressions about who you've reached, what my role is, or what's going on from my perspective. So from my perspective, prior to today, I don't think I'd seen your name prior to today. I don't believe I've had any involvement in your case or situation or anything else. So I'm coming into this thing cold. Um, okay. There are a division of approximately 100 something people. I think there's about 50 attorneys here. We may have had an AAG on your case. It kind of depends. Um, was there an attorney that you recall representing Ellen I during your case? Well, yeah. Would you mind telling me who that was? Oh, gosh, I don't remember his name at all, really. Uh, I know who my claims adjuster is. I know she's a, she's a legal operations manager for Workers' Comp, Natividad Valdez. Okay. So. Oh, I, I can't remember the guy's name, O'Neill's or something. I, can't, I don't remember his name, the, the, the opponent. <laughs> right. That's, that's where I'm just trying to. I don't have my paper in front of me for, for the court from where he, where they tried to fight me. I wouldn't know his name off the top of my head. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, I can take a quick look while. Are you able to look it up through the claim number? I'm going to try here in just a moment. I'm pulling up our system to do that. Let's see. You happen to remember the docket number, so the number that was actually used at the board. That's the fastest way, but if you have a claim number, I can try to... The claim number is the only thing I remember at this point. It's AL11947. All right, let me see if I can get in here and figure this thing out. Uh, all right. So, in our system at the AGO end, so our, our system is organized by cases at the board, so they're not, you may have, for instance, one claim with l and and you might have multiple appeals or cases that sure. are attached to the same claim. Sure. Our system would track that for each, like, appeal. Does that make sense? Sure. So, when I search for you in here... Uh, I see, appears to me to be about five different dockets, five different appeals that were taken to the board at one time or another. One appears that like it was done or started in 2012, and the most recent carries what's called the 16 docket number, which indicates that the appeal likely was begun in 2016. Yeah, they went back to 2016. The, or, they, the, the, the judge ordered them to go back to 2016 for the reopening. Judge Bryan. Okay, I'm just trying to catch up here, sir, one moment. Sure. So I'm... I'm looking in here. Um, at the latest or most recent appeal, it looks like it was handled by an attorney named Scott. Yeah, Wessels. We, Wessels. Yeah, Wessels. Wessels. Yeah. Here's that gentleman out of our Everett office. So he's in a slightly different division, but I'm not saying that 
that's something that would put me off of following up on this. Just trying to catch on here. Okay, so looks like there were hearings back in 2017. Uh, looks like our system indicates at least that there was last order that's input in here was an order from the board in May of 2018, which was an order denying petition for review. It's how it's labeled in here. Right. That's the one where they order them to reopen the claim. Okay. So let me come back in here. Because it, it gets remanded back to reopen, I think is what it says, basically. Okay. So you sent me two different emails, it looks like. One in here, I just took a look at it. It appears to be a picture of a notice of decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. That's the order right there, isn't it? This looks to me like a department order. Right. The order to reopen the claim. Right. Okay, so this order, I can't see. I can't see right top of my head when this order was issued, but it does say it's in response to the May 2018 decision at the board. So it does reopen the claim effective September 12, 2016 is what it says on here. I'm just reading it off the picture you sent me. Sure. And so you're concerned about this order? Uh, yeah, because basically I haven't, number one, haven't got a paper copy of that order, or any paper copies of anything. Along with that order, there was a follow-up letter, because I do get everything digitally over the, you know, the comm system. Right. So I do right. see the stuff on there. It, it, that, it's still there. It's like not, not nobody's just taking away. I'm not saying anybody's doing away with information, but I'm not getting the paper documents, which I think I feel I should have. Um, Did you sign up for electronic service, do you recall? I, 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 I could have done it by accident or something, and, but I, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. But also, as part of one of that, one of the letters that was in there was a letter that told me that they wanted me to update my current provider. So I did that. I went to the comm system. I requested that they update to my current provider and and, and my next appointment date. And then it, it, the letter, con, uh, uh, the thing automatically asked me back, told me back, said your 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 adjuster will contact you within three days to tell you yes or no if we've approved your work comp provider. Well, she never did respond back, and 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 it's been and and it's been like uh like three weeks or so, and she and they did a case review yesterday that says I have no no medical and no no current doctors and nobody providing care, and that they paid everything in full and that they owe no money basically is what it says in the case reserve, no forward pay, no back pay, and the PPD award that I got back in in 2016 is all you get and we're done with you. It's open, but you're not getting any money. You're not getting any treatment. Forward pay or back pay. No talk about, and I also during this process, I won my SSDI who went back to 2013. And he and his, and the SSDI judge says right in his opinion that work comp harmed my mental health, the Washington State work comp system. And so anyways, now I'm on SSDI, but, but, and I got my kids back pay. They gave me like 15,000, but my back pay is being held up because the work comp system, the, the judge, the FFDI, the social security people are waiting for you guys to, 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 to adjudicate this and, and, and pay your part so that there's like an SSDI, uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't know what it is. The SS, will you guys work together and you decide what you're supposed to pay me? <laughs> talking about something like an offset yeah 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 that thing okay that's what people should be talking I'm not telling me oh we don't have no doctors for you and when, when I have doctors I'm still in treatment I've never gotten out of treatment I've been in treatment for practically four years or six years now it seems like I'm still in the treatment the, the treatment got cost shifted off to the ACA who's paid for the treatment when it should have been the work comp system paying for it 
and now here again, we're, it's time for them to pay up. And 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 and, and Valdez is saying no, she she doesn't have any uh, a doctor's. Uh, she doesn't have she doesn't have a doctor um, medical basically, and that's the whole. What I had to appeal was because she said my 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 doctors were not qualified to to say what say what say what they were saying. And I went through the two years of appeals process, and we come out the back in, and they say, yes, listen to my doctors. And now she's telling me I need new doctors, and the ones that I'm giving her, which were the same ones we did the appeal on, she won't, she won't turn on, even though they have provider numbers, work comp provider numbers. Okay. So that's what's holding up things. She, all she has to do is do her job and turn on everything like it's supposed to be being turned on, like she was ordered to do by the board. And then also tell that and now the board requested the uh, interest that I be paid so much interest or something. And so they requested from L and I some information. And so now they, L and I sent some information to, to uh, the interest department at the board. And I've talked to the people at the interest department and they say, well, they didn't, add any forward pay or any back pay into it so we don't have any ad interest to add on there but we're holding your file to to get this question answered that you have well my question is yeah well why aren't they telling you about the two years worth of back pay and how it's supposed to be offset with whatever i got paid from social security and then what, what interest needs to be paid on that that's what needs to be happening here not people still harming and adding insult to an injured worker who had mental health conditions who has been his forced to be his own lawyer for six years and has proven that that has angst his mental health even more so so nativa dog doing this is adding more insult to injury for which i am going to talk to the ssdi judges and and try to get a civil rights attorney because this has violated my human rights at this point sir I heard a little snicker there. You hear no snicker here, sir. You hear me trying to figure out okay. how to address what's going on because... Because I want due process, you know, and I have went through due process and now and I have an adjudicator, state adjudicator, who is putting a foot in a way of that due process going forward and nobody policing her. And apparently that's where you're supposed to come in and police her now. Although you are a part of my enemy that I fought against the whole two years to start with. You're, you're with the AG, correct? I'm, I'm with the AG's office. So the AG's office has multiple divisions, and the, the division you're having to call, the, the division that I'm responsible for, is the one that represents LNI in cases. So okay. if I, <laughs> I represent them in cases, that's the part of our office that we deal with. There, there are separate parts of our office that deal with other issues if you have a, you know. Uh, so basically this guy told me from the board to talk to you, the, the AG's office, why are you complying? And I'm asking you that. So now you guys need to go chase the chain down the, down the chain and find out why you're not complying with a court order from the state. Well, I'm happy to talk to the department and try to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I hope so. Somebody needs to at this point because what it, what it what is proving to be as I as a per se litigant and, 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 and a patient in mental health ward of the state, I'm being forced to, to fend and be a, an attorney for himself again here because because apparently the, what the board did was become my attorney to a certain degree because I had an AD, a, AD, uh, a, uh, what, what, a, a person with disabilities request. And so instead of giving me a lawyer, they gave me a prima facie case instead. So therefore, the board almost become my my lawyers in a certain way. They were responsible for me as 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 a human being and as the patient at this point. And so it's like they have told me to call and and call the the adversarial side and ask them why aren't you doing what you guys are supposed to be doing? Well, I just I don't know. <laughs> That's how I feel at this point as the injured party. <laughs> right, and I, and I can tell you, sir, that generally speaking, I'm not referring to your specific case right now, but from a general standpoint, in the average workers' compensation case, our involvement in the case usually ends or is pretty much over once the board or whoever makes the final decision in the case has rendered their decision. Sure, sure, I understand that because, so, because the other people should just abide by the order. So generally speaking, yeah, when an order comes out, whatever that outcome is, 
it goes back down to the department to be administered. And that's, you know, their wheelhouse, that's what they do, that's their, their whole purpose for this type of work that they're engaged in. So, um, well, cost containment is what it, it is, but go ahead. Well, it's just... Well, it's cost containment. Call it what it is, sir. It's, 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 it's the order of the process. So the, the cases go up on appeal, and once the appeals are over, they're back to being administered because the department... Yeah, but if, but if, you, but if, you, but if your adjudicators know that my, my workers, they're supposed to be listening to our, our doctors, and they're not listening to our doctors, they're making us go see IME doctors instead, then they, right out the gate, they violate our rights. Well, I can't comment on your legal theories or how you feel about the system. I mean, that's not for me to get into the legal merits or to argue or agree <laughs> with you on that standpoint. That's Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. A couple of what I can do. What I can say is that, you know, the department usually has on every order that it sends and in regular correspondence with claimants like yourself, injured workers like yourself, they usually send contact information out, you know, here's where you can write to us either through the online system, here's who you can call, that sort of thing. So, yeah, no, I, 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 do, I know that whole system, but I talked to people at the board, they told me to call you. Okay. Apparently, you're supposed to have some control or power. They felt over uh, your side of your side. I'm curious. So, someone at the board actually specifically referenced you to me, like sent you to me personally. Yes. Oh, interesting. Um, well, yeah, it is for me too because here I call you and you seem to say, "Well, I'm on the other side and I can't really do much for you." Because I represent uh, that's the state and not you, the injured worker. Well, yeah, I can't legally advise you. I'm happy to convey information <laughs> um, back and forth. And sure. Well, okay. I, I, if you got, yeah. What? What part? What? Tell me what you can do for me, sir. Well, I can listen to what the situation is from your perspective. I can take that information. I can relay it back to L and I, who is the client of my house or my division at the AGO and express what concerns you have and sure. ask them to take a look at whatever has been done and to see, you know, what they should do going forward. They like 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 the SSDI offset that they're supposed to be working on. Right. They, yeah, because my 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 you know my back pay is being held up for that. That's why we need to expedite it. So you know, like my family isn't out here dying. Okay, so that's where you know the department again because it's the, it, the claim is back with them now, so they get to decide how to administer or adjudicate the claim in the first instance. They can take that information and they will do with it what they decide to do, they may ask us to advise them, but ultimately the decision belongs to the Department of L&I and Labor Industries on what to do. So it would be like if you hired a lawyer for your claim, your lawyer might, you know, facilitate things. He could convey messages back and forth to you. He might even give you his recommendations on what you should do, but ultimately your decision on how you're going to pursue your side of the case is up to you. It's your, it's your claim. It's your you're the party involved, and just the same way L and I, since the claim is back with them, it's in their ball court to decide how to proceed with whatever they're dealing with. And from my standpoint, well, they, well, they had a chance to do that. At, they had a chance. They had like a 60-day period in which they could have took it to the next level into the real court system, but they chose not to. Okay. You know, again, I don't, yeah, that's uh, that's what would have went happened. You know, if if I was the other way around and I was upset, I would have been going into the next to the real courts to sue and out of the kangaroo court system. So now, but the other way around, the the, the board, the AG, you guys, you could have, you had a chance and an opportunity to to fight me in the real courts of law, but you you chose not to. And now it's gone back to like you said to the department. Now you're telling me the department gets to decide whether or not they're going to abide by the rules or not abide by the rules. And then I gotta fight them all over again. Well, 
all I can see, sir, from what you sent me to, again, I don't have any documents beyond what you provided to me. I, I can't see, like, the board's order, for example, on what they ordered the department to do. The document that you sent me, just on its face of it, not seeing what the board told them to do or anything else, it appears that the department was saying in that order that they believe they were complying with what the board told them to do, which was to reopen the claim effective a certain date for authorized treatment and actions indicated under the industrial insurance laws and reversing the prior order as part of that process. Now, I haven't seen the board order. I can't. Well, the board order speaks pretty much the same way. It's telling them to reopen it going back two years and, and, and to make up for what was done, basically, and, and, and the medical, and, and, and to open it now, definitely to open it now, not to have it closed. Well, it is open, but, but not with time loss and not with medical. Well, for, for example, again, this is completely hypothetical because I have not seen the order. The board could order and say that the issue before the board was whether the claim should be reopened or not on a certain day. And the answer is yes, it should be reopened. And therefore, the board is ordering the department to do that. Yeah, they right. did. The board ordered them to open right. it going back two years ago. And, and hold on just one second there. And then so what could happen, though, is if that's the extent of the order, once the department has issued its order complying with the board, future decisions about what to do now that the claim is open, go back to the department's judgment on how to adjudicate the claim. The claim's already been adjudicated. Well, if, if I'm trying hard to see if I can explain it, because I feel like I'm not explaining it very clearly. If the, if the board's instructions... Who makes the decision at L&I? Is it going to be the adjuster who makes the decision? Well, there's a whole process at l and It can vary, so I'm not saying it's absolutely 100% true. In general, when orders go back to l &I, claims managers usually make most of the first decisions on claims. And then if that claim or that order is protested, there's a second layer of review, which I would guess you're probably familiar with, with is usually a claims consultant involved or someone in that area of the department who takes a look at it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I know how to do that. I didn't see how do, how do I do that at this point, though? What is, how do, how do I, what am I going to complain to them about at this point? Well, so, again, going Because there's no the, order, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because she's not, she's not doing, she's not doing an order or anything like that. She's not, so I have no, nothing to fight against. You see what I'm saying? Well, I guess one question I have is whether you, have you contacted her? The person that you're working with? Oh, yeah. When the, I've tried to. She doesn't respond, and she responded back once through the comm system, and that was it. And it was something very short, and it wasn't even – had it, it, it wasn't even uh, – uh, it was just showing that and she was replying back to that I had called in and tried to get a hold of her. Yes, no, I just left her several messages, uh, voicemails, emails, the whole works. No, she knows she's supposed to be turning on my doctor's. She knows I've given her the, my doctor's names. Uh, she knows Senator Mike Sells has been involved in my, my case. He, my, Representative Mike Sells told me that all I had to do, Darren, is go to L&I, tell them, have your doctors say that you needed to reopen your claim, uh, and that they would have to do that. Well, now two years later, he's right. The board did tell him to reopen the claim, but they're still doing nothing for me. So now I got to go back to my sales, and you know, the, I have hundreds and thousands of people watching me across the nation, believe it or not, uh, as an injured worker. I am networked with people throughout all the other angry injured workers across this country. We have joined together to fight back. Okay. I mean, the hard part for me, sir, is I'm just, I'm operating kind of in the dark to an extent because all I can see is one piece of the orders that came out of whatever the board said to the department to do. And so if the order that you sent to me fulfills 
what the, what the board told the department to do, and now a claim is sitting back open with the department, and you're asking for further action on it, and further action is not happening. Um, the general process is to stay in touch with and ask the um, LNI personnel to take action. Um, there are contact lines with the department that are out there for the public as well as the specific numbers. So if you have a concern, um, oh, okay. you can look and see if there's a place to get more directly in with the department. I'm just trying to look at their um, their contact list and they provide to the public. I'm basically doing a Google search like any Sure. What it could. Well, if you Google me, my claim's up there, and so is the order. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find it here. I got it laying around. I normally I got a docket number sitting around someplace. Right. Uh, so. All my social security paperwork I've got was turned plain the, the ones from L and I. Well, well, that's all right. You got my claim number, though, right? I have your your claim number and your information that we've got in our system here, sir. Here's what I think I'll do at this point is I, I will reach out to the department. Unicate, I think you said you were going to Terry Dodd, Valdez. Valdez, yes. So I, I can reach out to them and just give them a call and say, hey, I've heard from this individual, Mr. Fon, Fonzo. Fon, yes, Fonzo. Fonzo. I've heard from Mr. Fonzo. He's got concerns. He's trying to get a decision or an action taken on his claim. And from what you tell me, again, I can't see it, so I can't verify it directly to you, but I'm not going to sit here and doubt you because I don't have any information to do that. But what you're telling me is, from what I understand, is that there was a board case, the board issued the claim, ordered the claim to be reopened. It appears to you that the department has reopened the claim, but there are further issues to you that need to be decided still, and that has not happened. Is that Correct. accurate? Yeah. Okay. So I, I can reach out to them and say, hey, this is what's going on, just to kind of give them a heads up and ask them to either, you know... Try to comply. <laughs> Well, it might be easier to come back to you and deliver whatever message they want to deliver, or in my view, it's almost always best to have direct contact, right? I'm not the one who's going to push the button to make an order happen. That's going to be someone at the department. That's Natividad Valdez. She's the legal operations manager, so she's my she's my adjudicate, or my, 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 what do you call it, caseworker. Okay. Well, that's, that's just, yeah. It's, it's, her, Do you want her phone number? No. Uh, sure, I'll take it from you if you got it. I'm sure I can look it up. Though. It's 360-902-5000. Uh, it. Okay. And we used to have a good rapport with each other until now. Like I said before, we had a great rapport. I had a great rapport with her, but this time around, I honestly feel that I'm getting 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 a runaround for no reason here and and, and and when you go and adjudicate something after six years and and, and now the last two years of it adjudicating it, uh, it, it wears a person out you know we're mentally fatigued the SSDI and I, I have that turned on I, it's like I've won the booby prize if you want to call it that but it's being cost shifted when my employers should have been responsible for, for, for the harm done and that's what we're seeing here but anyways you have been a great help sir and I and I do hope you are able to help me to a certain degree, whatever you can. I appreciate that, and I do want to say though I feel it is it is hard for us injured workers to have to, to fight against our own state AGs, who I as a Democrat voted in this guy, uh, it, it, and he becomes my enemy when I'm harmed on the job. I feel that that makes is a con unconstitutionality that maybe the AGs department looks needs to take a look inward at itself and see if we can't have some other way of, 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 of doing this to where our own AG doesn't become the enemy of we the people. And we are insurance consumers in this state because we pay the premiums right alongside the employers, which makes us insurance consumers just like the employers. So anyways, I want to thank you so much for at least being nice and kind and trying to work with me, sir. 
Well, I appreciate that. And I, I do want to stress, you know, that at the 80s, we do consider ourselves most definitely public servants. And, you know, even though my specific division has a definite role to play in the workers' comp system, I can tell you that, you know, my direction, my expectation for all the attorneys that work here, even though we represent LNI, is to make sure that the system operates in a way that's fair and transparent, even when we can't agree with an employer or a worker or whoever we might be, you know. Sure, sure. So that's why this I find this kind of egregious that I've gone through the process and then and, and I feel like it, as a pro se litigant I'm I'm getting I'm being thumped again because I don't have an attorney who would be able to stand up and say, No, this is what you don't this is the way it's gonna go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I'm I'm at I'm at I'm at a disadvantage once again. As the as the as the litigant and, and anyways, but I want to thank you. You have been awesome, and do please do call and, and do what you can for me. Thank you, sir. I will, sir, and we'll try to get word back to you. Like I said, um, my hope is that it'll either be me or someone from the department or someone on our behalf that you know we'll we'll try to keep working at this and see if we can't answer your questions at the very least. You know, I can't promise agreement, but I can promise that we should try. Sure, sure. Folks. Sure, sure. No, you t you were honest with me, and you told me where you're at. You told me what side you're on, so that is awesome. But we know that, and but that you know, but yet you know. But anyways, it's all good. I'm cool with it. <laughs> and I've also shared with injured workers of, of the world if they try to tell them to call you, that it, it's you know it, that might help a little bit. But for the most part, we know where you, what side you you guys are on, and so that for for them to basically call you is not what the one we should be calling. We need we need somebody else to call that will have some teeth to help us. Well, like ghost, but you know who you gonna call? Ghostbusters is at this point. <laughs> and here, who's the board telling me to call? The the people I'm fighting against. So you see, that's really hard at this point for us. But I I I will share how how at least you were very nice and and, and very helpful. At, you know, in, in trying to do in, in, in your part. And you from what well, you're 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 my enemy in this case, and it's sad, but that that is the way it ends up. But but at least you are polite and 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 dignified, and so am I. So share that with the others. <laughs> Positions may be adverse at times. I really try to say, you know, it's it's about getting the system to operate correctly. That's really what it's about to me. So you know, and that's why I am as as an enraged litigant the way I am, and and going across the nation. Like I have some songs too. I do like uh, Workers Comp Blues is online, and it's not good music, but it's the heart that matters. And injured workers across this nation. On both sides, Democrat and Republicans, were coming together to try and get our legislators to address this issue. So Nativa Dodd at one time told me her hands were tied, that she couldn't help me because of the legislators. And so I ended up, you know, fighting with the legislators. So as my as my part as 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 the, the angry in, in, little litig litigant or whatever, <laughs> I'm trying to do my part in in, 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 in in a system that I can't really fight back civilly in a, in, in a fair and just timely manner anymore. It seems. Uh, it, it nicely by doing it through song, dance, and romance on the internet and networking with other people to get them all aware so that we wake up our legislators so that your hands aren't tied and my hands aren't tied and so that maybe we don't have to one day even be adversaries in this in this type of situation. Well, I hear you, sir. I, yeah, it's I, a goal. It's a dream. It's, 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 no, I think that's how, how change is made. Is people stand up for what they believe in and advocate to their elected representatives. And that you're reaching out and you're trying to communicate with agencies like the AGO and LNI. You know, sure. our system should be built to be able to respond and answer to that. Again, not that we always agree, but that we at least can have the conversation. So I thank you, sir, as well, for being civil and explaining your position and um, being patient with me while I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And we'll see if we can't get some type of response going on our side. Well, that sounds great, sir. And you have a great day, Lionel Grievous, right? Lionel Greaves. Yep. Well, thank yes, you, sir. sir. You are awesome, and you have a great day. Thank you. You too, Mr. Fonzo. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep.